A train that doesn't touch the tracks, gliding at speeds that make airplanes jealous. No wheels, no friction, just pure futuristic magic and a travel speed of 505 kilometers per hour. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, it's not. It's happening right now in Japan, where trains are already in the future. How do you create a global phenomenon, something so precisely engineered that it's measured in seconds rather than minutes of delay? The answer, you make the train float. Maglev, short for magnetic levitation, removes the steel wheels and rails from the picture. Instead, powerful magnets lift the train mere centimeters off its guideway, eliminating rolling friction. Over the decades, lines expanded, speeds climbed well above 300 kilometers per hour, and the Shinkansen garnered an unbelievable safety record. Zero passenger fatalities from collisions or derailments in normal service. Now they decided to go even further with a new project called the Cho Shinkansen, which will transport passengers from Tokyo to Nagoya in just 40 minutes and complete the journey from Tokyo to Osaka in an incredible 67 minutes. The new project will slash bullet train travel time in half and change how people commute in Japan's biggest cities, bringing a huge economic and social impact on this major route. It could reshape commuting, tourism, and even where people choose to live. The trick is that the line will burrow through the Japanese mountains for a significant portion of the route. That means advanced tunnel boring operations, complex geological surveys, and massive infrastructural designs that can cope with the region's frequent earthquakes. More than 80% of the Tokyo-Nagoya segment alone is slated to run through tunnels, each stretch requiring specialized ventilation, drainage, and emergency systems. If any country is up to the challenge, it's Japan, the place where building codes are similar to the Bushido code of the samurai. On top of that, maglev technology itself is an engineering triumph. Instead of using standard electromagnets, their superconducting coils cooled by liquid helium so they can generate enough force to levitate and propel multi-ton trains. And whereas a conventional Shinkansen has wheels, an electric power system, and a track that can handle mild curves, Maglev can't just piggyback on existing lines. It needs an entirely new guideway built for high-speed levitation. The engineering complexity skyrockets, and so does the cost. Between Tokyo and Nagoya alone, estimates hover around 9 trillion yen, well over 80 billion US dollars, give or take. Extending that line all the way to Osaka might bring the grand total closer to double that figure. Japan's Central Japan Railway Company, which operates the Takedo Shinkansen, is investing massively in this project. Part of the rationale is that the original bullet train corridor is nearing capacity, so this new maglev line can free up that older route for more local or regional services while also revolutionizing long-distance travel. Another part of it, Japan's brand revolves around precision engineering and maglev is a colossal demonstration of national prowess. If it works, if it hits those promised times without crippling debt, this could stand as Japan's next big claim to transportation fame. Still, it wouldn't be a mega project without a fair share of controversy. One of the largest points of contention arises from environmental and community concerns. Tunneling at such depth can alter groundwater flows, and areas like Shizuoka Prefecture have expressed serious worries about how the project might affect water supplies. Farmers, local governments, and environmental groups want guarantees that precious spring water won't be diverted into the tunnels or drained away, jeopardizing crops and local ecosystems. JR Central is conducting thorough environmental impact studies, pledging to manage or reroute water where needed. But the tension underscores just how delicate large-scale interventions can be in a land so reliant on its natural resources. Then there's the question of what it means for Japan's broader energy footprint. Maglev is electric, so its emissions come down to how the electricity is produced, if it replaces a sizable chunk of domestic flights between Tokyo and Osaka, that might cut CO2 overall. But building the system, especially those lengthy tunnels, burns through tons of concrete, steel, and energy. Japan is already working on greener energy solutions, but the extent to which they'll power the maglev with low-carbon sources remains to be seen. Now, no conversation about high-speed Japanese rail is complete without mentioning safety. The Shinkansen's safety record is almost mythical. 
The maglev needs to match or exceed that track record if it wants to preserve public confidence. Since the train floats, there's less physical wear and tear compared to conventional rails, but you're dealing with more advanced electronics, superconducting magnets, and the potential for powerful electromagnetic fields. JR Central's test track in Yamanashi has logged countless runs at speeds up to and above 600 kilometers per hour. In April of 2015, they reached a speed of 603 kilometers per hour, which is recorded by the Guinness World Records. The system is designed to slow or stop automatically if anything goes awry, and the train itself can lower small wheels or rubber skids if the magnetic field fails and it loses levitation. In practice, these features are rarely used, but they exist precisely for worst case scenarios. Beyond Japan's borders, the world has watched maglev with a mixture of excitement and skepticism. China considered expanding maglev technology, but ultimately opted for more conventional high-speed rail in most cases. Meanwhile, the U.S. toyed with a proposed maglev line between Baltimore and Washington, D.C., but that has faced steep challenges with funding and local opposition. Japan is, by far, attempting the longest, most ambitious maglev line on the planet. You might wonder whether the dream is too big. Will the ridership support all this investment? Japan's population isn't exactly booming, and high-speed rail is already well-established. Skeptics suggest it's an expensive vanity project. Proponents counter that once you shave travel times down to nearly half, you reshape everything from commuting patterns to where businesses choose to locate offices. For example, if you can get from Nagoya to Tokyo in under an hour, you might decide to live in one city and work in the other. Business day trips become more viable, potentially reducing the need for overnight stays and boosting productivity. There's also the tourism angle. Travelers worldwide might flock to ride the planet's fastest train just to experience 500 kilometers per hour in style. Despite these upbeat forecasts, challenges persist. Construction has already faced delays due to local objections about water resources, and further pushback could shift the timeline from the originally targeted 2027 opening for Tokyo Nagoya. The full line to Osaka might not be finished until 2037, or even later if negotiations drag on. To top it off, Japan's famous earthquakes can force additional complexities or unexpected design revisions. But if there's one thing the Japanese rail industry excels at, it's tackling big obstacles with meticulous planning. Conventional bullet trains glide smoothly on rails, but you still hear the soft hum of wheels on the track and feel the gentle rocking when traveling at 300 kilometers per hour. By contrast, a maglev ride is often described as feeling almost like an airplane at cruising altitude, minus the turbulence. If you're on board a train that's literally floating, there's no rail noise. The primary sound is wind resistance, which is inevitable at 505 kilometers per hour, but can be mitigated with aerodynamic shaping. Many sections of the new line will pass through tunnels, so the view might be limited to dark walls rushing by at warp speed. That's perhaps a small price to pay for cutting your travel time so dramatically. Plus, it's a bucket list thrill for a rail geek or anyone enthralled by advanced engineering. From the vantage point of maintenance, maglev could simplify some tasks. No wheels to wear out and no overhead wires to maintain in the conventional sense. Still, it also introduces a brand new set of challenges. Superconducting magnets, cryogenic systems, and precisely maintained guideways. Any deviation in the track's geometry might affect levitation, so the track must be built and maintained to exact tolerances. That's part of why the upfront costs are so astronomical. Of course, an unspoken goal here is to keep Japan at the pinnacle of global rail technology. The Shinkansen earned worldwide admiration and has been replicated in various forms elsewhere, though usually with local adaptations. By pioneering the largest maglev network in history, Japan asserts itself once more as a rail powerhouse, potentially unlocking new export opportunities. If it can demonstrate the system's viability, financially, technically, and ecologically, other countries might be more inclined to jump straight to maglev for their next high-speed corridor, which is also an export chance for Japan. It all boils down to a mix of ambition, capability, and necessity. Japan's high-speed rail lines are nearing capacity cities continue to expand outward, and the nation's hunger for speed is undiminished.
The Chuo Shinkansen Maglev Line is a paradigm shift. If you chop the journey between the country's biggest commercial hubs to mere minutes, you unlock a wave of economic synergy, but you also take on colossal risk. There's no guarantee of success at these stakes, but if you look at Japan's track record, from building a bullet train system that's still the envy of the world to mastering earthquake-proof design, it's clear they're not intimidated by tall orders. So yes, there's a reason global eyes are fixed on this project. If they pull it off, we'll be looking at the world's fastest, most advanced passenger rail line, an engineering marvel that turns Tokyo Osaka into a borderline commuter hop. If it stumbles under financial or environmental pressures, it'll serve as a cautionary tale about technology racing ahead of practicality. Japan's bullet trains represent a deep commitment to precision, customer experience, and constant improvement. This project pushes all of these attributes to their absolute limit. Deeper tunnels, faster travel, and bigger budgets. Will it reshape the nation once again, the way the first Shinkansen did over half a century ago? We'll find out soon enough. If you enjoyed this look at one of the boldest rail projects in the world, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more stories of epic engineering and construction coming your way, and you won't want to miss a single one. Stay curious, and we'll catch you next time on the channel.